Hey everyone, Jose here today to talk about is the R2 getting LiDAR? Let's jump in and talk about it. That's right, let's talk about the fact that the Rivian R2 that's coming out in 2026 could potentially get LiDAR support. And I talk about this and mention this because recently, RJ, the CEO of Rivian, has been sharing a bunch of photos and teasers and video and, and all that about the R2 production. They're getting ready to start camouflaging vehicles and testing them out in the real world. So keep an eye out on that. But today I want to talk specifically about LiDAR, uh, which is light, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> excuse me, light detection and ranging technology. And I say that because there's something particular about some of the photos we've seen from the R2 that indicate that LiDAR could be coming to R2. So let's take a let, let's take a look at the photo that we're talking about as featured here on rivientracker.com. There is this photo here of the R2 production vehicle or pre-production vehicle uh, being dumped into a, uh, a, a you know kind of a, a, a pool of liquid um, to help protect corrosion and paint and all that. And uh, that's not so important. What's important is this right here in the middle. If you look at my where my mouse is pointing. There's a cutout that seems to indicate something is going right above the windshield. Um, this is different from like the system that we currently have in the R1, where everything is kind of inside the windshield, right behind it on the top center portion. So this looks different. And you might be going, Jose, that, that could be anything. And, and you're right. It could be anything. It could, for all we know, it could just be satellite antenna, right, or, or anything like that. But... If we scroll down this article and we take a peek here at this, this is the Volvo EX90, Volvo's newest electric, fully electric uh, SUV that features LiDAR. It's not completely activated just yet, but it does feature LiDAR. As you can see here on the top, right in the center above the windshield, above the camera that's here where the rearview mirror is, um, there's a bulge, and that bulge contains the LiDAR sensors and technology for the Volvo EX90. So... Could the R2 potentially be getting LiDAR? Well, we don't know until we get closer to seeing a production version of the vehicle. Rivian has neither confirmed nor denied the existence of LiDAR coming to R2 at this point. Now, this is not the first time Rivian has toyed with the idea of bringing LiDAR to their vehicles. Uh, many, many years ago at this point, when the R1T and R1S were first announced, Rivian stated and touted that it would feature LiDAR. That never made it to the production versions of the vehicle uh, for Generation 1. And then when Generation 2 came out, we did not see that uh, LiDAR come to Gen 2 either. Variety of reasons as to why that could be. Um, and um, a majority mainly because of the mobile eye system for autonomy that we've been used in Gen 1. Uh, and also cost. LiDAR historically has been expensive to add to vehicles. But the cost of LiDAR does progressively go down is going down and so with the fact that Rivian has been looking at other cost cutting measures on the R2 such as eliminating the accessory ports that were were, were behind the R2 where you could plug in third-party accessories I'm not talking about a tow hitch these are proprietary uh, connectors that Rivian had created that we saw at the R2 unveiling Rivian has removed all mention of that from their website and and there's just no mention about it at all so who knows if we'll actually see something like that come to Rivian uh, R2. But for now, we just have to assume it's not going to happen because there's no mention of it anywhere. So cost, with, with an example of that as cost cutting, plus I'm sure Rivian has found other places to cut costs, um, I could potentially see them really going full in on autonomy because they are going full in on autonomy, right? Rivian is building their own in-house system to compete against Tesla's full self-driving, uh, Ford Blue Cruise, GM Super Cruise, these other tools that uh, let you drive on unmapped roads, that let you, you know, take you from point A to point B with very little in, uh, interference um, or user input, I should say. So Rivian is working on in-house autonomy. That's a big deal for them. Um, so 
let's talk a little bit about LiDAR and like what are some of the benefits for it. So, you know, when you look at LiDAR, we're talking about an ability to be able to create these precise like 3D mapping, right? Accurate 3D maps of the car surrounding, you know, it, it's, it kind of sends out laser pulses to measure the time and distance between things. There is a benefit of that over a camera, right? Right now, uh, Rivian uses radars and mainly vision to do a lot of things in their vehicle. Uh, similar to how Tesla has gone full vision with cameras only, LiDAR just does a better job at some detecting, especially in low light and nighttime conditions, uh, such as tunnels or just nighttime in general. LiDAR has the, the advantage and the edge of reliability over vision only. It also does better object detection in general with LiDAR. We're talking about being able to determine specific uh, items or, or objects, right, that may be on the road or near the road that vision may not be able to catch or may require more training to do with vision only versus the ability to do it with LiDAR. Rivian has continued to improve their software stack with their Rivian Atomy Platform Plus to, to be able to determine vehicles, especially on Gen 2, which is an in-house built system, uh, you can you can definitely tell the level of of item of detail in, in products and vehicles that you see on the driver display, and that continues to improve with every OTA over the air update that they release. And hopefully in the future we'll be able to see other things, kind of like how Tesla does, where you can kind of see cones on the road or trash cans or stuff like that, right? Other items on the road or near the road that may be of importance and priority. Um, and it's also enhanced redundancy for safety. So when you combine LiDAR with cameras and radar and all that, you're now suddenly getting a bunch of redundancy, which reduces the risk of failure uh, or misjudgment from any single sensor. Um, so it's kind of a fusion between all of it. So it, it produces a, be a better, safer uh, ADAS system and future autonomy system. So this definitely helps with autonomy. Um, it isn't necessarily strictly required to have LiDAR when you're talking about level two uh, driving autonomy. But as we look at level three and higher, right, which is definitely something that's on Rivian's radar, LiDAR is definitely something that will help uh, reduce uh, oddities and just improve safety and security amongst the driving stack and the, the user. Now, we talked about cost at the beginning. Exact cost of LiDAR, you know, I don't really know the answer to that, but it is pricey, right? It was pricey, I should say. Of course, if Rivian is, is helping build this system in-house and working with, uh, with other manufacturers out there to bring the cost of LiDAR down, we can absolutely see this being an introduction to LiDAR in the Rivian R2. Um, and we, can also, we could also even be talking about the fact that LiDAR may only come to certain models of R2. Maybe we'll only see it on the higher ed trim ends, right? Like that they have that ability. This is not uncommon for manufacturers to do where certain vehicles have uh, certain uh, features that are locked to higher trim, right? Um, so we could potentially see a situation here where LiDAR is only set for like the highest trim, right? Possible or, or, or you know, maybe not. Who knows? Um, we talk about bulk, right? There's definitely some bulk, as you can see here in this Volvo EX90. That is why aesthetically it may not be super pleasing. Volvo has done the best job they possibly can with hiding this above in the black roof, right? With all black, blacked out kind of situation. Um, and, you know, Rivian typically has a black roof as well. R2 should also feature a black roof potentially um, if you have a, a, you know, so like th th this could help with hiding it and, and be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to the eye than just uh, this bulge that just kind of sits up there. <clears throat> now, uh, you know, let's talk about weather performance. Just like cameras, LiDAR does do a little bit of a better job in weather, right? Hardcore weather, snow, hard rain, dust, etc. But it's not perfect, right? At the end of the day, it's still a laser or something that ne needs to get through particles. Uh, so it could necessarily be rough. Uh, and so nothing is 100% failsafe. Nothing is 100%, you know, foolproof. And um, I think that for Rivian to have autonomy, to be able to do autonomy, I don't think there's any downside to having multiple, like, uh, you know, sensors, an array of suite of sensors and stuff that helps. So 
Curious to know what you think. Do you think the Rivian will release LiDAR with the R2? Or, or am I overthinking this, right? Maybe this is just a place to store uh, the shark fin antenna, right? Maybe they're going to get rid of the little shark fin antenna that sits on the back of the vehicle. And they're just going to store these sensors in there instead. What do you think? Do you think LiDAR should come to R2? Will it make it to R3, R, R3 and R3X? Will it make it to R1, maybe in the future, Gen 3 R1? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm curious to know. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.